At the mixer, I was right about every guy that was in here. I am a sexual guy. I mean, I'm Scorpio, you know, I'm a, I wanna hold you. So this video is coming with a disclaimer. I watched the show uh, late at night. I'm also editing it late at night. I got distracted. I was listening to my wedding playlist. Do y'all ever get in that mood? I was in that mood after watching the episode. Um, so the review is a little bit incoherent because I was staying up late. Child, and I got Facebook up and Candy Crush. Mm. It's definitely giving 42, but if I sound a little bit spacey in this review, it's because it was late at night. I apologize in advance. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Ready to Love season nine. I never know what season it is because they do a weird numbering thing. The reunion part two. I actually liked part two more than part one. I'm just not here for the shows with the screaming and the yelling and the whatever. Like, I'm so glad Alexis is gone. And to the people, let me just add a little bit of clarification, okay? Because some people in the comments of my last video were like, love is blind and ready to love are the same. Maybe to you they're the same. And, and, and that's your business. To me, they're not the same for a few reasons. One, production value, it's not the same. Storytelling, not the same. And the depth of conversation, it's just not the same to me. So I didn't stop watching Ready to Love because it didn't have the mess or the drama or the whatever. It's because it just wasn't keeping me. The depth of conversation wasn't enough to keep me engaged in the show. So I stopped reviewing it just because I stopped watching it. But like I said in that clip, if we wanna see more black stories, more black dating experiences, we should rally around shows like Ready to Love. I think that they could do a better job at storytelling, but I still feel like a show like, I still feel as if a show like Ready to Love is important to have. It's unfortunate though that it's on the decline, but it is what it is. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. As we know, Alexis left, she did not return. Bye girl. I saw a little clip, well, I saw Chloe reacting to um, the interview between Little Black Book and Alexis. Alexis is one of those women who thinks that, um, you know what, go watch the interview and you take away whatever you wanna take away. All I'm saying is my opinion of Alexis has not changed. So let's move on. We pick up with Lamar, who admits that he was a bit too much on the show. What do you take from that? I'm a little much. <laughs> it's, it's aggressive. aggressive. It's aggressive. It's I'm an aggressive gross. person. You know, I want to spice it up, you know, and that's who I am. I'm tired of talking about boring things. Well, I mean, first conversations. It's too soon. Skinny dipping. I might not get another one. Does it make you feel like I need to maybe change up my approach to this? Maybe tweak it a little bit. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, it just depends on who you're talking to. Because sometimes it works. I agree with him when he says, I was just tired of having the same old conversations. I completely agree. But let's have some cooth. Is that so hard? Cooth, decorum, you know? I know everybody's grown. So talking about sex shouldn't be taboo. But... If we got to see more in-depth conversations, maybe it wouldn't feel so crass that they're talking about sex, but the show likes to lean towards the more messy type conversation. So yeah, Lamar was off-putting for the audience and the women who experienced him. He did admit that it was aggressive and he could change his approach going forward. I did appreciate that. Jonathan is another one who did accept that he could have handled the process a little bit differently. However, there's some things he's not willing to change. What made you so reserved during this process, man? That's when I'm my most vulnerable and my emotions tend to go left and right, up and down. You think if he'd have been open up about his past, he would have went through the journey a little um, longer? No, you asked, like, you and your baby mama still running the block. I'm like, I don't have a baby mama. You should have been like, that's my ex-wife. I've said it with other previous women, but since she already led with that, I'm just gonna let her believe that. Jonathan said he doesn't like opening up because it leaves him vulnerable. If you're looking for love, you gotta be vulnerable. If you're looking for a true love connection, you've got to be vulnerable. You're not ready to love if being vulnerable is something you're not willing to do. You know what I'm saying? So he did admit that he could have uh, been more vulnerable, okay? He also did admit that he handled the Alexis situation wrong when he asked her to sit, well, he didn't even ask her, when he 
pulled her on his lap and she was clearly uncomfortable about that. He did admit could have handled that differently. However, when it came to the miscommunication between him and Mika, Mika thought he had a baby mama when it really was an ex-wife. He was like, well, she already believed that. So I just let her believe that. Why? I <laughs> Why? You potentially could have had a connection with her. I mean, clearly, seeing how the season ended, that likely wouldn't have been the case. But you are sinking your own ship by not wanting to be open, by not wanting to clarify, by not wanting to understand deeper, be introspective. Jonathan is definitely in his own way. And that's unfortunate. But all right, well, He's content with his life, so what are we gonna do? While a handful of the men struggled to open up emotionally, they had no problem at all talking about their sexual desires, more specifically, their fetishes. I have a thing about a lady in heels that just does it for me. You like to suck it's toes? It's depending on what setting we're in. <laughs> are you a toe sucker? I do. You know how some women can judge a man by his shoes? Yeah. I judge a woman by her feet. Gets me soft up. Mm. Right. Oh, my boy. How do y'all feel about these men that had a foot fetish? <laughs> like I said earlier, I don't think it would be as much of an issue if we got to see really deep conversations more often. We do see them here and there. And sometimes even when they do dive deep, it feels like trauma dumping. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. So yeah, I, I, I don't see an issue with talking about sex, but the show just shows it so much. So sex is fun, sex is fun, <laughs> but there's more to love than sex, okay? Moving on. Apparently Chaz had a lot of connections. You guys know I hopped off on episode four, but if you saw that review, you would have heard my friend and myself say that this man was giving very unserious from episode four. Little did I know, it just got worse. I wanted to give everyone a fair shot and just keep an open mind. No. I wanted to explore each connection. Even if he says he tried his best not to be misleading, I think it, it began to be very misleading. When I brought you flowers, I brought you two dozen. Other women brought him a dozen. I'm not gonna spend a lifetime convincing someone that I care. The petrified flower, how did that make you feel? It was definitely unnecessary. Putting a dead flower in water, that's not dramatic for me. I'm poetic. The thing is, you're a narcissist. If I knew Chaz was gonna get left at the altar, <laughs> left at the bridge, I would have kept watching. I really would have kept watching. This man thinks he presents so well, but goofy is as goofy does. The man is goofy. And you know what's funny? The person who came to his defense was Alonzo. And I, listen. I do a self-regulation when I see certain people come to my defense. Because I'm like, hold on. If they agree with me, something's wrong. <laughs> if Alonzo was coming to Chaz's defense, I don't know. I don't know. Something might be wrong. But anyways, um, <laughs> this man, he, he said one of the reasons why it didn't really work out with Vanessa is because she didn't accept his dog. And basically if she doesn't accept his dog, it's just like someone not accepting someone's child. Now I'm not one of those people who see pets as children. I, th I think pets are pets, okay? So you people in the chat who, who see your pets as your children, it was it, 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 should it have been this deep? You let me know, cause I'm not one of those people. So I'm not gonna slander. If, if that's really the consensus with the people who agree with Chaz's mentality, okay? I'm just, I'm not gonna be like that, all right? Chaz, to me, is a very unserious person. The whole voice note situation, what I've gathered is that a YouTuber had insinuated that Vanessa and Chad had, Chaz had been sexual. She said, absolutely not, and how dare you say that when my son is in the room, as if she couldn't just close the video, but okay. Um, so, a voice note from Vanessa to her friend, but from Chad's phone was leaked to another YouTuber. And it basically confirmed that it, maybe they didn't have sex, but there was some kind of something going on between them. Just a whole, just a whole thing. The fact that his phone was hacked and this one voice note was leaked. Chaz, Chaz no, Chaz is a waste of time. Apparently there's a woman out there who feels like Chaz is not a waste of time and he is engaged. Look at that. I'm not on the market. 
It's a date set. To get married? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I knew her before, and she wanted me to go through the process, and she was supportive. Did y'all know he was engaged? Anybody know that? Typically, I would be up in arms to say, why do people come on this show knowing that they're not willing to give it a proper try? But because this show doesn't end in actual relationships, there's no engagement, there's no marriage, there's really no stakes when it comes to Ready to Love. It's, it's as if you can date outside of whoever's been given on the show. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, whatever. All the best to that woman because she's in for a long ride when it comes to jazz. Okay, let's move on. Laurent is in the hot seat. And he talks about how his lifestyle became a hindrance in this process. I wonder when he's going to grow out of it because this man seems to really want Maya, but Maya doesn't like his lifestyle. Your strongest connection was at the beginning with Koshia. Uh, I, that's not how I would word it, but... You guys still communicate? No. Maya chose to... Yeah, she, she chose herself. She dumped me. You know, I went back into the streets and partied up, and, and then I just messaged her, and I really didn't expect her to answer and she did there's a possibility yeah right? partying damn near every day when you're in your mid-30s is is concerning if you ask me i just went to go look up his age he is 32. <laughs> leron is 32. maybe that's why he kind of annoys me because he is the type of guys that i would run into in my own dating circuit this makes so much sense yeah the clubbing makes sense too i mean to each their own um, where are your priorities? That's what I would be wondering. Maya on the show didn't really like how he handles himself when he's in the party environment. So seeing Laurent basically be the same person, like he has not changed since the show and now she's considering is a little bit befuddling to me. I'm confused as to why she's now giving him a chance, but Laurent wants her bad. And it seems like Maya is looking for some change behavior. So if you want her, change your behavior okay uh then the men were exposed as being chatty caddies apparently they had a group chat going on and i keep saying apparently because i didn't watch the season i know y'all know this i know y'all know all of this but i didn't watch the season so um they had a group chat to conspire together to get certain people out as if this is some kind of like big brother house i think it kind of messed up the process because it took us away from genuinely get to know each other. Trying to create an alliance, I got confused. Well, that's a lot of time. Did. I said in a group chat, yes, can you, you pull did. it up? And I have it. Can you I pull it, pull it, it up? up? Actually, I can yeah. pull it up. I'm voting a trifling ass off. Because <laughs> I heard what she was saying about me to my inside connect. I did say that. We all said that. I, said, I know hey, you said that. It's right I here. I know I said You was a big liar, yo. <laughs> I don't care. Hold you on just, on you got a fake chain on. Uh oh. Jerry. Am I? Am I stretching? I probably am. And you guys will let me know. Am I stretching to say that Laurent might be the realest one of the crew? Now hear me out, hear me out, okay? Outside of him saying that uh, Koshia and Chaz were dating, they weren't, he's the only person who's standing on business and who has the receipts to prove it. Because before when he was talking about Alexis, he said, Alexis is out here kikiing with me and now she's calling me a snake and all that stuff. How does that make sense? And let me clarify with the whole uh, Alexis, Laurent situation. When I said that he instigated um, the conversation, I didn't mean instigate in terms of like he was antagonizing her. I literally meant, what's the definition of instigate? Because one of the definitions is um, to bring about or initiate. I literally just meant he initiated the conversation by saying, well, was it Alexis? That's it. I don't think that he poked the bear. I think the bear was ready to, to pounce regardless, okay? And then when it comes to Will, he was like, Will, you said this. Will was like, no. And then Tommy read out the messages. Will said exactly that. Like, Will, how are you going to bold face lie when there's physical evidence that proves that you are lying? This man is a stunter. He's a fraud. Truly, he's a fraud. And here he is talking again. Well, I make money. I'm good. I'm set. <laughs> if you got it, do you really got to flaunt it like that? Do you have to? Do you have to? I don't know. Some people do. Some people do. And he even said that. I caught a glimpse of um, him on the Little Black Book when they did their super panel situation. And he was like, I got a, was it a Maserati? A Rolls, was it a Rolls Royce? He had some kind of luxury car. And he was like, look, and my name is on it. I'm not a fraud. I got watches. Okay. I'm a millionaire. So 
All right, Stunter. That that necklace is not really giving millionaire, but okay, let's move on. <laughs> the only couple to make it out of the show and still be together by the reunion is Mika and Justin. I'm surprised because their values don't really line up all the way. But they say that they love each other. The big obstacle we was talking about was kid. I still don't want any. Mm, still don't want any? I wouldn't want to miss an opportunity with somebody that's special. Like, she got 90% right, and it's one thing that... You're willing to compromise? Yeah, I just feel like the stars align, and I don't want to miss out on something special. I want to ask you guys if you would overlook the kid situation in this uh, relationship, if it were you. Mika already has two children, and Will said she had her tubes tied. There wasn't a rebuttal on that, so I'm assuming the tubes are tied, right? And... Justin initially said, I'm okay with being a stepdad, but that he he then said, I'm cool with at least one of my own, right? His justification for still sticking it out with Mika is that when you find a good thing, you don't let it go, even if maybe not everything is in line. So I want to know what you guys think about that. And I'm also wondering, so Mika... Mika also connected with Dominique and Dominique wanted, well, he would have liked to have 10 kids, but the point is he wanted kids as well. So I'm thinking, what, what is the boundary with this kids thing? Cause you say you don't want kids, but then you pursue more kids, but then you pursue men who want children. Anyways, child, let's move on. The episode ends with um, a final check-in with Glenn. Glenn has no self-awareness, situational awareness. Like, I, I don't know why Glenn is here. It was very interesting. <laughs> How so? I thought I had a connection with everyone. All of them. Yeah, I really Acting did. Like chess. Oh, like chess. <laughs> oh, 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 Lord. You really think you connected with all the women? You think that for real? Okay. All right. Uh, the rest of the cast... Um, did a little catch up too. Mika and Justin say that they are end game. They feel like they're going to get married. Will says that he is kicking it with one girl, but also talking to another girl. So still unserious. Okay. Um, Lamar is still on the market. He's looking for the special somebody who gets his, uh, vibe. I honestly feel like he'll find it. It's just, she wasn't going to be on ready to love. We've never seen a woman who has been so, um, sexually aggressive. Have we? I don't think so. I was gonna say Alexis from some seasons ago. Um, the season that had the bald guy, was it AJ? And uh, the Christian couple, the guy with the shark teeth. Oh, this is getting bad. I'm describing people with characteristics now. This is not good. Um, the point is, typically, the men who have the demeanor that Lamar has are not going to find somebody on the show. So I think he'll find his person on the outside, though. William is trying to reconnect with Patrice. Apparently, he owes her a, a Ferris wheel date. That'd be cute. Vanessa and Dominique have been dating since the show. Um, even though he left the show, they did not stop dating. So that's interesting. S oh, let me not ask questions. Because then, Vanessa, you... You made a big stink with the whole Chaz situation, but you already had your situation as well. Okay. And then um, Laurent says that he really wants a second chance with Maya. Like I said, Maya's looking for some seriousness from him. Or maybe she's not, because why would she even consider Laurent right now? Laurent is not serious. At least it doesn't come across like it. This is the problem of living on a club street. Can y'all hear them? Loud as hell. Thank God I'm moving soon. The point is, maybe Laron is out there. Who even knows? The point is, um, Laron, I think it's time to grow up. I think it's time to grow up. And once you do, you might actually secure Maya or somebody like Maya who um, will fit in with what you say you want, but your lifestyle doesn't yet align with. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I liked this episode better than the first one. The first one was very chaotic for me. It was a lot sensory overload, maybe because I wasn't tuned into the show. Definitely not going to review the next season. I know I keep saying this every time. 
<laughs> but I mean it. This time I mean it. Um, I hope that Ready to Love has some kind of revamp because I think that there's hope for the show. There's hope for the structure of, no. There's hope for the synopsis of the show. The structure can be changed, definitely. Maybe on a different network too. I don't know. But I am gonna watch Never Ever Mets. Name is horrible, but I love the concept. If y'all haven't seen that, maybe I'll tag the, um, I'll link the trailer in the description box. But that's all for me. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.